Hi, have you ever wondered how much you should invest in a stock? I mean, what is the best way to use the money that you have? Is it better to buy 50 stocks at $100 each or buy one stock at $5,000? Well, today I'm gonna to help you calculate this for yourself by using something called the Kelly Criterion. It is an interesting dilemma that fund managers and individual investors throughout the world face when they're making a decision about their investment. How much money should they invest? Well, by the end of this video, you will know the answer and you'll also have the formula to calculate it yourself. But it takes a little explaining. If I just give you the formula, well, it won't make a lot of sense unless I explain to you how to use it. And FYI, some people refer to it as the Kelly formula rather than the Kelly criterion, but it's exactly the same thing. The criterion, which was funnily enough invented by John Kelly when he was working at the AT&T Bell Laboratory when he was investigating telephone noise signal issues. It sounds strange, right? But the gambling world actually got wind of this criterion and they started to use it in the horse racing world. The gambling world, well, they still use it as the optimal way to increase their winnings, but it is in the investing world where it's most useful for you and I. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Monish Prabhai, well, they all use the Kelly Criterion to help guide them make a decision on the size of the investment that they should take. So if it's good enough for the best investors in the world, well, it's good enough for us as well. So the easiest way to explain the formula is through a simple game of heads and tails. And let's imagine the total amount of money that you have to bet with is just $1. Okay, so the scenario is this. Heads, you win $1.50, but tails, you lose $1. So in this bet, do you put all of your money on the first coin flip? Well, of course not. You have a 50-50 chance of losing everything. But the game is a pretty great game because the win is bigger than the loss while the odds are 50-50. So how do we work out how much to bet? So we work it out by putting the information into this formula. So the Kelly percentage equals the probability of winning minus one minus the probability of winning again, divided by the winnings as a percentage. Now. Let's make that a little bit clearer by entering the information for this game. So you've got K, which equals the Kelly percentage, which is what we're trying to find out, equals 0 0.5 because it's a 50-50 bet, right? So 0 0.5 represents 50-50 on the winning side, minus then 1 minus 0 0.5, which is the other, which is the loss, like it's the 50-50 on the loss side. And then you divide that by whatever the winnings are going to be for the game, which is $1.50, so 1.5. And this will equal 0 0.167, or if you put that into a percentage, 17% of your available balance. So in this game, it would be wise for your first wager to be 17 cents. Because if you lose, well, you still have the bankroll to try again and again and again. Now, something that is very, very important is the Kelly Criterion actually only works if you have a profitable opportunity. For example, it doesn't work for something like roulette at the casino because it isn't a profitable opportunity. Choosing red or black is actually a 47.4% .4 chance of winning double because of those pesky green numbers. But in our coin flip game, well, you get a 50-50 chance of winning and the win is bigger than the loss. So our coin flip game is a profitable game. And generally speaking, if you play enough of these coin flip games, this is what will happen. If you look at the red line, now this is if you've bet too much. You bet more than double that what you're supposed to and you're going to go bankrupt. The dotted line, well, this is where you've bet exactly twice the amount you are supposed to and you're just gonna stay level. Now the blue line, now this is where you've bet less than the formula suggests, and the green line, well, you've bet exactly what the formula suggests. So to get the maximum return from this game, you should always be betting 17% of your available balance. Now it is still gambling, so you can't have bad runs when things just don't go your way. Now these three graphs here show different outcomes for playing the game 250 times. Now you can see if you are unlucky, it can still be a bad result. What these graphs don't show you is if we kept playing to 1 million, then the Kelly formula is still the best use of our money. What would happen eventually is that using the Kelly strategy, you would eventually come out on top, but it can be volatile. And on the other hand, if you're a bit more lucky, then you get great results faster compared to if you wager less than the Kelly formula suggests. Remember, the volatility just could be higher. Okay, now let's change the game a little. So now we have a coin that's designed to land on heads 51% of the time. So it's a weighted coin. And this time, whatever you bet, if you win, well, you double your money. But if you lose, you lose your money. So if you bet $1, you either win a dollar or you lose a dollar. So what should be the maximum we bet of our available balance to get the biggest return and to not go bankrupt? All right, so let's use the Kelly criterion. So it's the same formula as before. And what we've done this time is the probability of winning is now 0.51 because it's, remember, it's a weighted coin 
minus, well, one minus 0 0.51 divided by one, which is the winning percentage because you either double your money or you lose your money. And that will give you a Kelly percentage of 0 0.02 or 2%. So in this game, you should be betting 2% of your available balance at all times to maximize your winnings. But this is all gambling and we're investors. We don't have the opportunity to play this game a million times. We might only have 10, 20 opportunities in a 10 year period. So how does it work for us? Okay, so I'm gonna go through an example using a real company, which is gonna be Global Cord Blood Corporation, which is a Chinese based company, which I've analyzed in the past. And it's a good example because the risks associated with this company are a little bit higher than other stocks. Now, unlike the coin flip game, it is far more difficult to predict the probability of winning with the stock, but we have to try to give it our best guess. What we're really going for here is to be mostly right and not horribly wrong. So the first risk for this investment that I looked at was to see whether the company's financials were all smoke and mirrors. I mean, Chinese companies don't have a great reputation for being transparent with their financials. But the question we have to answer is how bad is it? And can we put a number on it? Well, I'm gonna to attempt to put an actual probability on the outcome that the company is full of mm, hot air. So this is how I approach the problem. I went back to 2010 and 2011 when the Chinese companies went through a serious investigation. At the time, there were 56 listed public companies on the New York Stock Exchange and 20 were found to have some irregularities with their finances. Now, since then, it has been far tougher to get listed in America, but I'm also not naive. Fraud still definitely exists with Chinese companies. Now, I did some research into the company Markham BP, and this company helps Chinese pre-IPO and post-IPO companies enter the US market. And they found that one out of eight companies have fraudulent activities. So what a lot of people don't realize is that accounting fraud is actually more rare than it is a common occurrence. When we hear of the luck and coffee spectacular fraud, well, we paint all Chinese companies with the same brush. And right now there are 156 Chinese based companies listed in America. So if one in eight companies have fraudulent activities, that would be 12 and a half percent. But let's presume it's higher than that. And the fraudulent numbers are at 2010 levels of 35%. So let's also assume that these companies are so fraudulent that their stock price should be zero. Even though a lot of fraudulent companies have different degrees of fraud, some are gonna be minor, some of them are gonna be major. But let's assume if the company is fraudulent, then we get wiped out completely. So because we've decided there's a 35% chance of fraudulent activity, our win probability is 65%. Now, if we take a look at the financials and analyze the industry that it's in, which I've already previously done, and please go back and watch that video on uh, to see the full analysis of the company. Well, there are industry associated risks as well. For example, the Chinese government might step in and get involved in the company somehow, or just something unforeseen happens that we can't predict. And I think it's better to be conservative here. And let's just say hypothetically that there's a 20% chance of something dramatic happening to the company. Well, I actually think it should be far less than that because the company has been around for quite a long period of time. And as time goes on, a company builds up a fair bit of resilience to short-term events. So now factoring in this 20%, well, our win probability is down to 45% and our total loss probability is now 55%. Just stay with me. Now we have to see what we would win if the 45% probability event takes place. I think the win would mean that we get a share price back to fair value. Even factoring in the poor year this year, we should see $11. But again, let's be conservative. So I think at a minimum, the win would be that the company reaches the level of the takeover offer that's on the table, which is $7.50 per share. The current share price is $3. So to get to $7.50, it would be a 150% increase. All right, so now let's put all of this into the Kelly criterion and see what happens. So we have the same formula as before. So K, which is the Kelly percentage, and then we got 0 0.45, which is the probability of winning, minus 1 minus 0 0.45, divided by, well, the winnings as a percentage, which is 150% or 1.5, and the Kelly percentage comes out at 0 0.083, or about 8%. Now, of course, I've made a lot of assumptions and guesses here, so I want to factor in some sort of margin of safety here. So let's halve it to 4%. So using the Kelly criterion, I am comfortable in this investment to invest at least 4% of my available balance, but I would invest any more than 8%. Now the upside in this investment could be far greater than I have factored in, but the downside could also be greater. So remember how this is just a guide. 
Well, now you see why it isn't a perfect answer, but it helps me get a good ballpark into what I should do. And if the wipeout does occur, well, I'm only gonna lose between four and 8% of my available balance. So if the investment goes against me, well, I'm gonna to be totally okay to take on another investment in the future. All right, let's try it with a different example and let's use Berkshire Hathaway. Now the company is forecast to grow per annum at 20% and the analysts all agree on this number and the company has been able to do it for 55 years now. So in my opinion, I would say the likelihood of 20% happening in the future is likely. But what do you think the chances are of us getting at least 15% per annum? Well, obviously 15% would be more likely than the 20% but nothing is a sure thing. But let's assume that there is a 90% chance that Berkshire Hathaway is gonna return for us at least 15% per annum. Now this is gonna be crazy conservative, but let's assume that the other 10% is the probability of Berkshire Hathaway going completely bankrupt, something insane happening and they going to zero. I really think there's more like a 1% chance of this happening, but let's just continue anyway. All right, so let's put this information into the Kelly criteria. And this time we've got 0.90 as the probability of winning, which is our 90% chance, minus, well, one minus that 90% chance, divided by, well, our winnings as a percentage. Now, because we're only getting 15% per year, let's put it as 0.15. And the Kelly percentage equals 0.23 or 23%. Again, there are a few assumptions happening here. So I like to halve this percentage. So I'll get a range from 12% to 23% of my available balance of what I should invest in this situation. But what if we were really bearish on the company and we thought there was say a 20% chance of Berkshire Hathaway going to zero? Now I have no idea what could make Berkshire Hathaway go to zero, but I don't know, maybe Warren Buffett sells everything, steals all the money and flees off to, I don't know, North Korea or something. Look, this is all just hypothetical and let me just show you the math. So in this situation, well, we've got a winning probability now of 80%, so 0.8, minus, well, one minus 0 0.8 again, divided by the 15% that we're gonna get per annum. And that gives us negative 0.53 or negative 53%. So in this situation, by just changing the probability of a wipeout to even slightly more likely, well, it means the Kelly percentage turns negative and we shouldn't be taking this investment at all. So you might be wondering, how could we possibly allocate a percentage to something that we have no idea whether it's gonna happen or not? We can't predict the future. Well, it's not about being perfect. The Kelly criterion just helps us think about the risks associated with an investment and the rewards as well. All right, let's now look at it from another angle. Now you might think the analysts are going to be right. You have done your research and you cannot see any reality where Berkshire Hathaway doesn't hit at least 15%. You might also take the more realistic approach that the company going to zero is more like a 1% chance. So your Kelly criterion might look something like this. So now we have a 99% chance of winning, so, as the formula suggests, the Kelly percentage in this situation will be 92%. Now, after halving this, you get a range between 41% and 92%. So you could easily justify investing between these numbers of your available balance. All right, now let me summarize everything by saying this. No investing system is perfect. The Kelly criterion will help you allocate funds to opportunities effectively, but it will not pick winning stocks for you and it cannot predict sudden crashes or anything like that. I like to use it as a guide to how much I should invest in something only after I've analyzed the company and I've gone through their financials. I also only even pull out the Kelly criterion if I'm already getting a margin of safety. But when a great opportunity comes along, the Kelly formula will help you take advantage of it. If the odds are in your favor and the rewards are really high, well, you should be aggressive. Opportunities don't come around very often and you will need to be decisive the Kelly formula will definitely help you be more decisive. And sometimes you just need to go big and just not so big that you get wiped out and you can't recover from the loss. So what I've done for you is I've put this into a step-by-step -step plan. So the first step is to analyze the company, understand exactly how it works and its future outlook. Number two, go through the financials and make sure it passes all of your criteria. Now watch any of my stock analysis videos to see how I do this. Step three, make sure you're getting a really strong margin of safety. Number four, then I apply the Kelly criterion to allocate my available cash. I use the Kelly criterion as a guide and that's all. I also keep under the Kelly percentage because I don't have the opportunity to take the same bet a thousand times. Plus, it's not clear exactly what the probabilities are. So it's better to be on the conservative side because as being too aggressive, it can wipe us out. Being conservative won't wipe us out. I also like to play around with different scenarios, just like I did with Berkshire Hathaway. 
and I just get to see which one feels right. But if the odds are in my favor and the rewards are high, then I will be big and decisive, but it just won't be too big that I cannot recover. I really do hope this is a helpful way to understand how to allocate your resources. And I actually apply this formula to business ideas and other alternative investments as well. So I think it's a very useful formula. And if you enjoyed learning about the Kelly Criterion today, please make sure to let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.